Okay, so we're going to be looking at some of the last bits of exercise 6F, and the theme in this one is that they are usually to do with triangles that are inside circles. So I just wanted to introduce some new terminology that sometimes gets used during this exercise, and it just makes things a bit more sophisticated. So I've got a diagram here of a circle, and I've got a triangle inside this one. Now, rather than just saying the triangle is inside the circle, you'll notice actually this triangle is touching the circle in these three points. So what we'd actually say is that the triangle inscribes the circle. A shape inscribes another if it is inside and its boundaries touch but do not intersect the outer shape. In other words, they are just exactly on the edges of that circle. Similarly, if we were to describe this circle for this triangle that we've got here, we would say that the circle circumscribes the triangle. It's got this circum at the beginning because that makes you think of circumference. So if the, cir uh, if the circumscribing shape is a circle, it is known as the circumcircle of the triangle. The centre of a circumcircle is known as the circumcenter. Okay, so this would be the circumcenter of the shape that we've got here. Really, all we need to know is that we've got this triangle that is inscribing a circle. And it's just it's some extra knowledge here that you might find interesting to know about. And again, for exercise 6F, we have two different kinds of circle theorems. One that I think you're familiar with and one that we're going to be doing a bit more work on. So really, this is the one that we're going to look at for our first example, and then we're going to look at this one over here for a second example. This, by the way, is not a cross saying so ignore it. It's actually talking about some perpendicular bisectors, uh, but we'll have a look at that in just a minute, okay? So focusing on this side that we've got here, I have um, said that if the angle ABC is 90 degrees, so if ABC is 90 degrees, then AC is the diameter of the circumcircle of triangle ABC. So if we have here, this would be the center of the circle, AC is going to be a, dia a diameter. And actually you will have come across this with different language in GCSE. I suppose what we would usually said is that the angle inside a semicircle is a right angle. So this is our um, our triangle that is inscribed in this circle. This is our circumcircle that we have here. And so AC is the diameter of this circumcircle. Similarly, if AC is the diameter of a circle, so this one here, then ABC is 90 degrees. Therefore, AB is perpendicular to BC and also Pythagoras is true. So this one is saying if this angle, then this is a diameter. This one is saying, if this is a diameter, then this is a 90 degree right angle. So it's the same thing, but just from vice versa. OK, and we're going to use this to help us to answer some questions and then we'll come back to this one afterwards. So we've got two different methods for this example that we've got here. It says that the points A, B, C lie on a circle and it wants us to show that AB is a diameter of this circle. So again, I like to draw a sketch just to think about what is going on here. So I have AB, they've told us that that's gonna be the diameter. It doesn't really matter where I put C, but I know that wherever I put C, this is going to be the case. I know that this angle here is going to be a right angle. Now there's two different methods here. You can either use Pythagoras because it's a right angle triangle, or because these two things are perpendicular, we can show that AC and BC are perpendicular to each other. And we're going to do both of these methods. So let's begin by finding out what AC is equal to. Now, AC is going to be the square root of the differences between the A coordinates and the C coordinates. But because I'm interested in finding out what AC squared is, I'm actually just going to go straight in without the square root sign, OK? So the differences between the x coordinates is going to be a 4 squared, and the difference between the y coordinates is going to be an 8 squared. So we get that ac squared is, what's that going to be, 16 plus 64, feeling lazy, 80. Now we're going to work out what bc squared is. So that's going to be the differences between the b coordinates and the c coordinates. So the difference between the x's is an 8, and the differences between the y's is a 4. Well, that's the same as the other one that we've got there. So b squared is equal to 80. And let's also work out what ab squared is. So the differences between the x's is going to be a 12 squared. And the differences between the y's is going to be a 4 squared. So that's going to be 144 plus 16. 
which is 160. So clearly here, we can see that a squared plus b squared is equal to 80 plus 80, which is 160, which is the same as a b squared. So because all of those things are equal to each other, we have shown that a b is a diameter. So I'm going to say, because a squared plus b squared equals uh, a b squared, a b is a diameter. Now you might like doing that one if you're kind of into Pythagoras sort of stuff, um, but actually I think this one is is really really neat. So if they are perpendicular to each other, it is going to be a diameter. So I'm going to work out what is the gradient of a c. The gradient of AC, make sure you're concentrating on the right ones that we've got here. I'm just going to highlight them to make it easier for me to do. The change in Y is 9 minus 1. And the change in X is minus 4 minus minus 8. So it becomes a, a plus 8 that we've got here. So that is uh, 8 over 4, which is 2. Now, if I work out the gradient of BC, because that's the one that I think would be perpendicular, now going to get rid of these highlights so I can do some other colours. So I've got B, C. The change in Y is going to be 9 minus 5. And the change in X is minus 4 minus 4. So that becomes 4 over minus 8, which is minus a half. Now we can clearly see that they are negative reciprocals. So you could either say this one is the negative reciprocal of this one. Or the alternative way, if you don't remember this, is you can show that when you multiply them, if you get minus 1, then they are perpendicular. So if we do MAC multiplied by MBC, we get 2 multiplied by minus a half, which is minus 1. So the fact it's equal to minus 1 shows that they are perpendicular. So AC and BC are perpendicular, hence AB is a diameter. And now what we need to do is to find out the equation of the circle. Remember, equation of the circle, you need two things. You need the centre and you need the radius. Well, in this case, if we look at our diagram, the centre of the circle is just going to, we're going to give it the letter M because we know it's the midpoint of AB. And then we just need to find out what the radius is. So <clears throat> let's find out the centre. So I'm going to find out what M is by taking the average of the A and B coordinates. So that's going to be minus 8 plus 4 over 2. And the y coordinates are 1 and 5 over 2. So the centre is going to be minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2, and 6 over 2, which is 3. So the centre is minus 2, 3. Now the radius, you could either work it out between a and b and then halving it, or you could just work out ma or mb. So the radius is equal to mb, which is going to be the square root of, so I'm just concentrating now on, oops, get rid of this, on this coordinate and the green coordinate I've highlighted at the top. So the difference between the x's is 6, the differences between the y's is 2. So that's 36 plus 4, which is root 40. Hence, the circle equation is, oh, that's messy, let's make that easier. Y, oh, x minus 2, minus minus 2, so it becomes x plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals the radius squared which is 40 okay so that was us just using this first one that we've got here in my next video we're going to do this one that we have here okay